G'day guys, Rob here or Robbie Hogg. I uh, just thought I would do a quick video. I'm working on a track at the moment and I've run into some issues with frequency conflict. And I thought I would do this to show how to fix it and how to work with it. Uh, for this I'm going to be using EQ and panning. Alright, so let's get into it and I'll show you what I'm doing. Alright, so let's take a look and see what we've got. So I've got this ARP running up here and I've got this um, atmospheric sequence going. So let's have a listen and um, you can hear that when the ARP kicks in, nothing's kind of clear. So let's have a listen. So when this ARP kicks in, you can kind of, you get to a point where you can't distinguish between one sound, where one sound ends and another one begins. They're both kind of right over each other. And if we have a look at this on a um, spectrum, we can see what's going on. So this is both ARP and sequence running at the same time and let's have a look on the EQ visualizer and see what's going on. So what we can see here is this is the atmospheric sort of sequence. So we can see this dropping off and most of the sound is in the bottom end. Now we can see in this ARP that is riding over all of this. It's taken up all this space. So we need to try and use the EQ to clear out some room. So let's have a look and see how we do it. All right, so basically what I do anyway is because I've got the kick in the bass is taking up all this bottom end. So I'm gonna do a high pass this and set that at 300. And then on this one, same thing. I've got the bass and kick taking up all that bottom end, so we'll run a high pass on this, and I might do this one at 350. gonna do a second one just to make that curve a bit steeper all right now I'm going to pull down this and just shape it like that roll that off a fraction so high shelf and this space, this, this now gives me this whole space here. I'm looking for a crossover point, which is around that uh, 3000 K. So I'm gonna try and pull this down and then try and roll it off down through that 3000 K mark and give it a bit more space. And I'm gonna use a, oh, I'm gonna go a band, no, I'm gonna go a shell, low shell. I don't want to cut everything out because I still want some of this sound coming through. So, shell's a better option. And I'm also going to roll off the very top end.
just to allow for hats Have a listen to it from the start of here and see what it sounds like. go nuts with the panning. So I think that's sounding pretty good now. Um, so let's, just for argument's sake, and we can hear the difference, let's listen to it with the EQ on. And now let's listen to it with an off bypass. realized I've been playing with the wrong panning on this one here. So 
let's readjust them on the proper ones. That's how you work with conflicting frequencies. Anyway, that's how you can use your EQ and your panning for fixing conflicting frequencies in a mix. So look for the areas in the spectrum that your sounds are taking up. Figure out what sounds you want sitting where in your mix. You know, my atmospheric sound in the mix is taking up all of this space and it sits in there quite nice um, but the up was just overriding everything so look at what areas in the spectrum they're taking up and then carve it out so you can see here this is you know taking up that area so I need to fill in this area and that's what I've been doing here And that has worked out quite nicely. Okay, that's it. So I hope you got something out of this. I hope it's helped someone. Uh, remember, if you enjoy what I'm posting on this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. It'll help me out heaps. And that'll be really cool. Uh, anyway, till next time. Peace.